Peace, peace. Happy Thursday, expand day. Thursday is ruled by the planet of Jupiter, which has the energy of expansion. So one of the things I focus on on Thursdays is expansion, expansion of the mind. Thursdays are the day that I tend to do a lot of my uh, prosperity uh, prayers or rituals on Thursdays, the day of uh, the the day that the planet, the ruling planet is Jupiter. Uh, very good for that type of energy. Anywho, hey, 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 y'all doing? How y'all doing? I have been inspired to come on live uh, during the Mars hour of the day, at least once a day. So we are currently in the Mars hour, as I explained um, yesterday when I went live. Peace, peace. Hey, y'all. I went live yesterday. I explained that, you know, the days are ruled by planets and the hours are ruled by planets. Um, and just a little astrology one-on-one tip. <laughs> um, as above, so below. And so this is why knowing your natal chart and different things like that is very helpful. It's also why knowing the energy of the planets is very helpful because you can know what energy you're dealing with on, on different days, on different uh, moon and during the different moon cycles, all of those different things. And it does impact you, whether you know it or not, it impacts you. So I say when you know better, you can grow better, you can glow better. So why not use that the energy as a tool? No, we're not worshiping the moon. No, we're not, you know, depending on astrology to tell us how to live our lives. No, knowing our natal chart won't tell our future. Not really, kind of, but not really. <laughs> uh, knowing our natal chart does not make us psychic. It's not anything like that. The fact of the matter is we are energetic beings. And so the more we know about ourselves. And the more we have self knowledge, the better able we are. the The better the the we are better able to <laughs> live a more fruitful, vibrant, um, bright, light life. And if we gonna be here, why not live? Why not thrive? Not just live, but thrive. If we're gonna be here, we here now. So we may as well enjoy our experience while we're here. You feel me? You feel me? That's that's all. That's you know. That's my that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. I, I'm sticking to it. I am a, in realization that I am a divine being, an energetic being, a powerful being, a a a, a being that's connected to the the ultimate source of life. I'm connected to that. I'm one with that, and so I feel like I can have a whole lot of fun, but. I got to learn how to have the fun. You feel me? You got to, you got to be expect, especially because we've been conditioned to not have fun. <laughs> we've been conditioned to fear. We've been conditioned to chase after ourselves instead of going within and get to learn ourselves. We've been conditioned to uh, show and prove. We've been conditioned to be afraid. Like that's what our conditioning is. Starting very, 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 very early. Starting very early, we've been conditioned to be followers. We've been conditioned to chase. We've been conditioned to hide, to be careful, to plan, to organize, to control, to make it all happen, figure it all out, do it all on your own. We've been conditioned to do that. And so we've been conditioned to live a hellish experience. And so now is the time where the cosmos are on our side, where we can decondition, unlearn, relearn, um, recondition our minds, our hearts, our everything, so that we can live a thriving life, right? And that's really... What I'm grateful, you know, I my I started out my career in education and, um, you know, I have transitioned over the years to now still maintain a position as a instructor, a teacher, a facilitator, but in something that I love and what I love and have a passion for is living. OK, <laughs> and in order to live in the way that I feel like we all 
have the capacity to live, you have to get to know what life is. Ultimately, you have to get to know what God is. You have to get to know what this life is all about. You got to get to know this living, breathing being, you know, and what that is all about. And there's what I call three bodies to this. That's your spiritual body, your emotional body, and your physical body. If we were to bring it down to just three. So if you want to do an assessment on self to make sure you are living and thriving and doing all that you desire, uh, to that you are divinely inspired to do and experience your life, including your challenges and everything in a fruitful way, in an abundant way, a way of an overcomer, a way of a victorious, a, a victor, you know, then you must, you must assess those three bodies spiritual emotion and physical often and also cultivate those three bodies cultivate your spiritual body cultivate your emotional body cultivate your physical body ashe and so that's my passion i love it it's something that i have been on a journey on and i love to share my experiences on that journey and i love to uh um and as i share the journey you know i show up as a teacher and so you know, I love to teach. I love to instruct. I love to facilitate powerful conversations and reasonings. And so I'm just very grateful. So for those who tuned in and you don't know who I am, I am Queen Yen, the founder of OU Ministries. I offer various things, but one of the main things or some of the main things that people know me for are my Sunday meditations, motivation and meditation. I host that on via Zoom on Sundays, free of charge. For um, anyone who wants to tune in live, you can tune in to that. That's on Sundays. Um, I also offer new moon and full moon meditations. I help people to understand uh, cosmic energies and how to use cosmic energies as you are doing your own personal work and your spiritual work or centering your spiritual work and your personal work around cosmic energies like the moon cycle and the season changes like the solstice and the equinoxes. I talk a lot about that. And I try to take the spook out of spirituality. That's my whole goal. Take the spook out of spirituality. I grew up Southern Baptist. And so I grew up with a staunch Christian family. So trust me, it was no gemstone, sage, and none of that type of stuff. We couldn't even burn incense, okay? <laughs> so no, I didn't grow up, you know, eclectic or anything like that. I grew up Southern Baptist, staunch Christian. And so... Um, just from my observation, no shade on anybody. No, you know, I don't have any resentments, any anger when it comes to any of it, none of it. But in my experience, I didn't necessarily grow up understanding the spiritual side of my being. I didn't grow up understanding that I am a spiritual being having a human experience and what that really means. Um, so, you know, I came into that knowledge well into my 30s well into you know uh after having children after all uh, children i have one my big baby who just walked out but um after having a child after being married after having a whole career after all of that was said and done and i'm on my way into my life you know i wasn't happy and i was not i was looking around and going this can't be it this can't be all i'm not happy i don't want to spend the rest of my life doing what i'm doing and feeling how i'm feeling and it wasn't that you know i wasn't you know i wasn't happy that i had a child or my job everything was well but from the inside i just felt like i just wasn't connecting like i wanted to be i wasn't really expanding like I wanted to expand. It was something that I was feeling. And um, gratefully, I was led to go on a search, you know, become a seeker. I started to seek understanding about life, a purpose. I remember the first thing I was really focused on, what is my purpose? I kept asking myself, what is my purpose? I remember there was a book that was very popular at that time, Purpose Driven Life. You know, and I got that book. I got the journal. I got, you know, I got everything. I think I was like, hmm. Maybe my 20s, when that was early 20s, when I got that book and I was really heavy into purpose-driven life, trying to figure out my purpose. What is my purpose? What is like my purpose though? Like I have many paths that I can take. I have a degree. I'm getting another degree. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. But I don't. I, I want to feel like I'm fulfilling my purpose. And so that was the that was the very I, I suppose first conscious seeking that I began to do, and that turned into Gratefully, I met, um, I went to, to grad school and in grad school, I met Dr. Asa Hilliard III, a world-renowned educator, world-renowned black, black psychologist, 
a world-renowned African historian. And studying under him, I was exposed to ancient African history. That was the first time. This in grad school, y'all. So I'm like a good 21, you know, I don't know, uh, 22, something like that. And I'm exposed to ancient African history. And I am amazed. I'm like, whoa, I never knew this is what we came from, huh? So I'm I'm being exposed to that. I'm also being exposed to um, ancient African techniques to teach. Um, and so that was very intriguing. Learning how the Dogon taught, how the different cultures uh, built their education system, learning about the Moors, learning about all of these different things. And in this graduate program, it was teaching us how to take this ancient knowledge to how to be uh, excellent teacher, master teachers. It was literally a master teacher program. That's what it's called, Urban Teacher Leaders Master Teacher Program. And so I was being taught to be a master teacher in the classroom. And 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 that is, I will definitely say, that's when I very first was exposed to excellence, you know, African excellence, black excellence, you know. And it was really from the standpoint of we were born, um, you know, we are African, a F R I K A N. We are African, and that doesn't mean uh, a place. You know, we are a per uh, we are people from the place Africa, but it means the essence of what it meant to be African. You know, and how I was taught, and how it was explained to me, and how it resonated with me is the essence of being African is being uh, pure, is being. Um, is being humble, is being one with God, is being under, is being in submission of spirit, in submission of the creator. That's what it meant to be African. And so you are, to be African is acknowledging that you are a spiritual being. And therefore it is really, your walk is to outpicture your spirituality, you know? The, the nature of your being, which is spiritual. And so that means you're connected to the source. And so all of your guidance and everything that is being guided to you on your path is in alignment with ultimate good, absolute good, absolute goodness in, um, in whatever role you play. You, if, if you stay close to yourself and you get to know yourself, get to learn yourself, get to, get to understand spirit, get to learn how to speak to spirit, listen to spirit, work with spirit, work with the, you know, the elements of spirit, then anything that you're led to do will be for the glory of the almighty. And you have the programming already in you, just like the caterpillar. That has the programming it need to blossom into that butterfly in that cocoon. It don't have to go outside of it. it. Don't have to go try to get it from nowhere else. None of none of that. You got everything programming you like the caterpillar to blossom into what you're supposed to be. And you're very unique. No butterfly is the same. But every butterfly matters. <laughs> Do I sound cliche right now? <laughs> I'm green juice drunk. <laughs> <laughs> what you want me to do <laughs> anyway but that's real that's what it meant to be african to me that's how i you know when i was exposed to be an african that's what it meant to me it's a book actually called to be african um it, i think that nana before dr hilliard had a portion in there but i think mama marimba was in there a few other people so that's the beginner part of my seeking journey, of this journey of living a holistically well, vibrant, thriving life. And that gratefully, I was exposed to that to help me to understand you are not what these institutions tell you you are. You are not what people are trying to get you to be. You are not what any, you are not none of that. You are a spiritual being, divinely made, already programmed. You have everything you need, all knowledge you need, all everything vision everything you need in your dna <laughs> it's already there <laughs> now just just get to know you know study and show thyself approved get to know you get to know your the makeup of you you know from the cosmic aspect to the physical aspect and so um my passion 
has been for some years now to learn that to help my help get a gain an understanding of myself as a spiritual being an energetic being a cosmic being a star seed all of that beautiful stuff and then also get to know my physical body so that i can be able to take care of the temple where the almighty resides within you know and so that as I'm being inspired, as I'm being led, as I'm being driven, as I'm being, you know, being given this fire to do these things, to have these desires and passions, I have the temple, including not just my physical body and my physical strength, but the temple, including my mind, including my heart, my soul, making sure the temple, you know, the sanctuary is uh, taken care of. And so that has resulted into what was Queen Yen Ministries, uh, what now is OU Ministries, uh, after being convicted strongly, like this is not me, this ministry is not about me. I prayed and I, um, I petitioned for a name for the ministry because I never have ever wanted to be uh, worshipped, you know, or I, I appreciate the love, I appreciate the appreciation, I appreciate the adoration. I appreciate all of that. I love it. It's, you know, it, 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 it feeds me, you know, I love it. I love it. However, <laughs> I have never wanted to be worshiped and I know this ministry is not me. It is something that is being uh, birthed through me. It is something that's being done through me. It's like on this affirmation I got on my door before I walk out, um, Cease all personal effort and all beliefs in your works and rest in the consciousness that the father abiding in me doeth his works. Okay. That, that means the almighty that resides in me is manifesting through me. I mean, and so knowing that that takes me out of it, it, it relieves us a little bit. You know, it tells us you ain't in control of all this. Stop trying to fight it, fix it, force it, all of that stuff. Submit, surrender. And so uh, for a few years, I would say mm, last three, four years, I have been, uh, uh, this part of my journey is total surrender. I am, I am knee deep, <laughs> maybe chest deep. <laughs> In a surrender journey, in a surrender journey right now, I am, you know, uh, first part of my journey, you know, uh, which started way, way before my conscious thought of it starting, you know, um, it started when I was birthed into this physical experience, but, uh, I consciously started this journey, um, maybe, um, you know, almost 15, maybe close to 20 years ago, you know, at least 15 years ago, I consciously started this seeking journey of getting to know myself and seeking. And really what I was seeking was peace. You know, what I really was going after, I wanted peace, you know, above all things, above abundance, money, relationship, all of that. I wanted peace. I wanted to live a peaceful life. I remember at the age of 13, I said to myself, I was sitting on some stairs, like, you know, at my, I was in middle school, you know, sitting on some stairs going, I just want to be at peace. I just want to be happy. I just want to love myself. I remember saying that to myself. I just want to love myself. I want to, I want other people to love me. Like I just wanted peace. And so that has been a conscious desire of mine for a long time. And so when I first, when I first consciously started this journey, that turned into what I guess can be called a spiritual journey, spiritual evolution journey. Um, I was just seeking peace, you know, and then I found it, you know, or it, 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 I unfolded into it. And so I have been at a supreme level of peace for some years now. Um, and I'm so grateful, you know, I haven't smiled. I mean, I, I would say since 2015, I would say I have tapped into a level of peace that I'm grateful for, you know, where a lot of the fear removed, a lot of, you know, um, insecurities removed, a lot of like all of that dissolved just as I moved about my journey. In that journey, you know, it was 
you know, learning about the moon cycle, how to work with the moon cycle to help support my personal work. It was me learning astrology. It was me learning about various spiritual systems and religions. All, that was along the journey. And along that journey, I picked up various uh, practices and tools and different things that resonated with me and began to incorporate them in my lifestyle. And incorporating those things, including meditation, one of the greatest things I ever incorporated in my lifestyle, greatest things I ever incorporated. Oh my goodness, give thanks for meditation. <laughs> goodness. Um, but incorporating these things in my lifestyle helped me to tap into a supreme inner peace. And so I've experienced a whole lot of joy, a whole lot of peace, a whole lot of letting go, a whole lot of releasing, a whole lot of everything, including, you know, emotional weight, physical weight. So I've experienced that. I'm grateful. You know, I'm grateful. I sat in front of Abraham Hicks. Yeah, I went to Abraham Hicks workshop some weeks ago. And I kept saying, I'm going to sit on that stage. I'm going to sit in front of Abraham Hicks. I kept saying that. And I did. <laughs> I think I was like one of the last people. I think I was one of the two last, two or three last people. But I sat in front of her and went, man, you know, many of my dreams have come true. You know, many, because many, many has. But I, I did, uh, it came to a point where my seeking shifted from seeking peace to see seeking total surrender. You know, total surrender. You know, with, with total surrender. And what am I talking about surrendering to? Totally surrendering to the reality or the notion. If it is not a reality yet to one's mind. Totally surrendering to the notion that literally all is good. Everything is working out. Everything is already in divine order. Everything is calibrated for your good. Everything is linking up for your good. All is one. If you were given a vision, a, a, a dream, a passion, everything in this universe is calibrated for that vision to come to. Whew, I just got chills. For that vision to come to, come to fruition. Everything in this universe is calibrated. There are golden links everywhere. They are, I mean, everything is calibrating for your ultimate good. Surrendering to that, you know, and that's the journey I'm on. Totally surrendering to that. Because in that surrendering, you must let go, you know, and you must learn how to govern the mind or understand the mind. You got to work with the mind because the mind can sabotage, you know, the ego can be strong. You know, you have to purify the heart. So that your heart is at a place of peace and surrender and gratitude. You know, you have to surrender your mind, surrender your heart, surrender your, your ego, you know, raise your ego up. So your ego is dead set on amplifying the reality that all is good, all is well. And let your ego work on that end and not on your will, you know. And in that journey, it's, it's being able to... Um, experience the merging of the of your mind to the one mind to divine mind raising it up that's the journey i'm on i'm like i'm forever on that journey but i i have consciously been on that single-minded uh journey for a few years now maybe two or three years now um yeah i think i think when uh, my mother transitioned COVID hit, my mother transitioned i went into this full like self self-imposed initiation and just um hermit mode and and it and that's that's uh that's what I've been on and it's been a beautiful journey it's been a a, te a um enlightening journey you know being able to uh see some things that I was missing you know some some blind spots and um and um how the almighty like how in in the divine calibration of my life, I've been able to meet people that inspire me, that help support. Like it's just been a dynamic journey. It's been a dynamic journey. Yeah, it's been a dynamic journey. I've learned a lot, you know, and I've experienced a lot. I've manifested a lot. You know, it's just it's just beautiful. You know, as you walk your walk, let me say this, and give thanks to those who are tuned in. Let me say this. When you begin to focus more on truly understanding yourself and truly understanding the reality of God 
and the reality that you are a spiritual being. And when you really start understanding what it means to commune with spirit and to work with spirit and to listen to spirit, and when you start to snuff out those negative thoughts and those those uh, thoughts and mindsets to have you insecure about your own uh, vision and, and that inner guidance system that you have, and you start to trust more in yourself and you start focusing more on trusting in yourself and trusting in other people and what others think and what others know and what others experience and all of that and you start really zoning in and going within and working with spirit from within seek ye first the kingdom of the almighty and all these other things will be added if you seek ye first the kingdom of god that resides right there within you you gotta get with yourself Get separate yourself from everything, get some quiet space, breathe, relax. Like, you gotta get to that space to be able to do that true communion with spirit and true communion with God that resides within you. When you do that, it's revealed to you the type of love you that you will thrive with, the type of work you're supposed to do, the, the, the path, everything will be revealed to you, and then after that's revealed to you. If you can be courageous, if you can, if you can at least be courageous, your faith might not be strong yet for you to just be like, God, they'll just, you might still be scared, shaking in your boots. <laughs> but if you can be courageous and be obedient, a courageous obedience, then you can experience the development of trust that you need to live a magical experience. Y'all hear me? You heard me. Let me know you heard me in the comments. Let me know you heard me in the comments. <laughs> Listen, I'm telling you now, if you seek ye first the kingdom of the almighty, the spirit God that resides right there in you, if you can give yourself some room, separate yourself from the family, separate yourself from children, the husband, the wife, the job, to give yourself some space. Breathe. Go on some walks in nature. Get a massage. Soak in a tub. Relax. Come on. Let go. All of that. And sit with yourself. Let me tell you something. All of it will be revealed to you in beautiful ways. Seek ye first the kingdom and all the things will be added. Let me tell you why that is important. Because we seek, we have been conditioned to, trained to seek the kingdom of other people. Seek ye first the kingdom of the almighty. Seek ye first the kingdom of God, which is right there within you. In your own inner God system. But we have been taught to seek the kingdom of people. Seek the kingdom of the world. Seriously. And then we seek it. Find it. Get captivated by it. Become slaves to it. And then we either become comfortable with, comfortable with being a slave. Or we get extremely uncomfortable and we ready to take off. And that's most of us. Because we are divine beings, baby. <laughs> God, the almighty, resides within us. And so it would never feel comfortable to be under someone's oppression. To be under a system of, of oppression. And I'm not just talking about, oh, you know, black people oppressed. Having a job is oppressive. Being in friendships that don't serve you anymore uh, is oppressive. Being in relationships that don't serve you anymore is oppressive. Holding a lackful, limited mindset is oppressive. Having, um, ha having a lack of discipline and control with taking care of your body is oppressive. Eating foods that are not life-giving, but you are addicted to it because you're addicted to sugar and you have all these parasites, that's oppressive. Okay, so I ain't talking about the man. I'm talking about oppression in general. The root of oppression is 
in the mind. Dr. Bobby Wright, the author of Menticide, says the genocide of the mind, Menticide, is even worse than a genocide. Because you leave them alive and well, or not really, alive, but dead in the mind and in the heart and in the soul. Oh my God. How does that happen? When you are not, when you do not know that you are a spiritual being, a divine being, you're never trapped. You're never, you're never limited. You are abundant. You are limitless. You are expansive. You are magical for real, for real, not just as a hashtag. You have the power in your mind, in your heart, in your hands, in your everything. Like, man, y'all, it's exciting to really learn about the body, nature, the cosmos. Like, that. if you get to really learn those things, now I truly understand the disadvantage for many who, who don't know these things. Because when you don't know, yeah, you do have a limited mindset. But when you under when you learn so much about these things and you see the interconnectivity and all of these different things and you see the oneness between it all, everything can teach you. The seasons can teach you, the tree can teach you, the 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 you know, everything can teach you because it's one. Of course you can learn from the tree, it's one with you. Of course you can learn from the moon cycle. It's with you. You're one with it. It's all one. <laughs> I'm going to stop now because I'm running behind. I'm supposed to be somewhere at three and here I am. I said I'm going to just hop on here shortly. But listen, listen, listen. Don't go nowhere. Don't go nowhere. Listen, listen, listen before I go. Let me say something. Please, please, please. Don't go nowhere. Please, 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 please. I have been blessed with the opportunity to purchase property to be a permanent home for OU Ministries. Here in East Point, if you're in Atlanta, you probably have come back to the garden. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful space. It has been in the community for seven, almost 17 years. I, be, I was able to uh, take over management of the space in 2020. And now this year, I have the opportunity to purchase this space. I'm very close to doing so. Very close, but I need your help. If you've ever been blessed by a word uttered, a meditation, a coaching session, an energy clearing, a reading, a, a, a hug from me, a wave from me, anything. If you ever been blessed, if you have any type of love for your sister, love for OU Ministries, love for what I'm talking about, love for God, love for the community, love for gardens, love for fresh food, love for wellness, love for the light, love for love. If you got any love in you. <laughs> Translate that into hitting that button in the link in my bio. <laughs> Go to that GoFundMe campaign and give what you can give. Please do. And if you are connected with anybody who can spare $5, $10, $15, $20, $100, 1000 If you know anybody who can spare it, who will bless your sister, please send them to GoFundMe. You already know. If they're in Atlanta, if they come to Atlanta, they can come on out to the garden. They can hang out. Y'all know it's always vibes. It's always something going on in the garden, especially in the spring and summertime. You are invited. The whole family is invited. Send it to your family. Tell them, hey, support this sister so we can have a space in our community that we can go to and that we can have fun and we can and we can uh we can enjoy each other. We can enjoy nice spaces with like-minded people and all of that. Listen, we're building out a kitchen in the back, a seating area, a bun a form of bonfire area. We got the lounge space coming up. We got all these. If you haven't been out there, if many of you have been out there since August, since when I took over. And we have totally redeveloped it. We got the whole parking lot. So that used to be an issue. Not an issue anymore. The parking lot has been finished. If you hadn't come out lately, we got the bamboo fence up. You know, we have the mural. Every A lot of people saw the mural that was painted on the building. The mural that's painted on the benches. We have really poured into the property already. You know, but we have the opportunity to have total ownership of the property. 
We are about $55,000 away from our goal to owning the property. Listen to that, $55,000, $55,000. That's how close we are. And I know, I know that we can come together and make this happen. And for and in appreciation, y'all know I'm always showing my appreciation. So in appreciation, you are welcome to come out. Spring and summer of next year is going to be lit. It's going to have so many um, opportunities for you to come out and enjoy different events. I mean, it's just going to be so nice. It's going to be magical. <laughs> I can't wait to have the full moon bonfires. We're going to have the new moon prosperity circles. We got a lot of stuff coming up on the calendar that you're going to be able to take advantage of. But we need this permanent space for Oyun to continue to do what we have been doing already, what I have been doing already, and have a place to build for eternity. This is very important in our community, especially because now we're going into a new age where we are all being required to live as fourth and fifth dimensional beings and so it is essential for us to have these places where not where you can not only learn about how to function as a spiritual being but you can also have opportunities to function as a spiritual being <laughs> you know things like the meditation things like the grounding sessions things like the prosperity circles and the full moon bonfires and all of these different type of things these are very highly powerful Things that um, our people, our indigenous people have been doing for many, 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 many years. Um, but they did it on their land. They did it with their people. They did it within themselves, their own community. And that's what this space is for. For us to have our sacred community that already has a sacred shield of protection around it. That's all I'm going to say. It already has that embedded in it, giving thanks because this land was owned by a black woman who knew the importance of green space. And she has uh, kept that uh, even with some transition. One of her requests was to keep this property in the community as a green space. And it has been for over 17 years. And that's what it remains to be. So Mama Williams, who have transitioned, peace be unto her, who was the original owner of this, um, well, not original, Mama Earth is the original owner, but she owned this space. She is the owner of this estate. Um, she, This is in honor of her request to allow this space to be a green space that grows food and have opportunities for communities to come out and gather and do beautiful, you know, amazing things together. And so, we're honoring Mama Williams in doing so. Um, I'm honoring Spirit and, and Spirit telling me to build for eternity. Came loud and clear to me a little over a year ago. You need to build for eternity. And gratefully, I was already in the space. And then come January, I got a call from the owner and said, from the owner's um, peace man to Miss Mama Williams' son that said, we're ready to sell. And so we're going to give you the opportunity to purchase it. And so that has been my journey all this year is uh, raising the funds, um, getting, getting, getting everything I need up to acquire this property. And I've been able to keep it and I've been able to come a long way. And we're about $55,000 away from the journey. I think we can come up with that, right? I really do think we can come up with that. <laughs> I really, really do. <laughs> I think there's enough people that has been impacted by OU Ministries that can um, help me get to my goal. All right. So for you all who are watching this right now, either as a replay or live and in effect, thank y'all for staying on too. Y'all been on um, for a minute. Thank you for commenting. Thank you for being engaged. Please do, you know, whenever you can. Give today, give tomorrow, give your lunch money fast for a few days. You know, it's worth it. It's worth it. It's worth it. And I am offering a special gift for those who um, give on the GoFundMe campaign. All right. I do see some people asking me for the PayPal and different things like that. I appreciate um, your support via PayPal and via Zelle and those type of things when it comes to love offerings. But I'm, I'm wanting to keep transparency and um, make sure everyone knows that this specific pot of money is going to what I say is going to. It ain't going to me. It ain't my love offering. This is the campaign for the purchase. So I am asking that you do it um, on the GoFundMe campaign. We're also using that to keep up with the contacts of those who did give because we do have a special gift for you all. Um, uh, and we want to make sure you're able to get your gift. So if you don't mind, you know, you can add your name. And if not, 
you can put anonymous, but um, either way, we have a way to keeping up with you and being able to extend that gratitude offering to you um, once this campaign is done. So uh, I'm about to get ready to go. Thank y'all so much. I love y'all. Thank y'all for loving on me. Thank y'all for the prayers. Thank you all for the support, those who have supported thus far. I want to shout out um, one of my investors and partners, Kamikaze Elite Club. She's a member of OU Ministries. Um, I'm The owner of that is a member of OU Ministries. And um, she gave generously. She has invested uh, generously or her company has invested generously to uh, support the redevelopment of the garden. And they also are the ones who are injecting the event space out in the back of the garden, the uh, kitchen with the full bar, the sitting area, the stage with the dance floor, the bonfire, the lounge space. So I'm very grateful. I just want to always shout them out. It is it is so divine to have such beautiful support. And I appreciate your support as we get this thing done. All right. So can we touch and agree right now? T let's touch by hugging ourselves. We touch and agree that it is done. Go ahead and put in the comment section. It is done. It is done. It is done. It is done. It's already done. It's already done. <laughs> it's already done. I'm going to put a little dance emoji in mine. It's already done. Go ahead and touch and agree with me that it's already done. We gonna praise now because it's already done. So I'm grateful. Thank you so much, brother. Thank you so much. It's already done. Y'all, listen, I'm old school and I told y'all I'm Southern Baptist. And so we know when you touch and agree and we come together as like minds and we say it's done, it's done. It's already done. And so that's why I said, I'm gonna get up here and I'm gonna put it out to my people us, we who are like-minded, we who are supportive of, of each other, um, we who show love to each other. I'm going to put it out there to y'all for y'all to do y'all support in prayer, in effort, in money, in sharing, and all of that, you know. Put it, I put it out there, so I'm believing that it's done. I told my, um, my, uh, I was talking to the investor I'm working with and the broker and the owner. I said, look, y'all, it's done. It's done. We're dealing with a Mercury, uh, not a Mercury, a Mars retrograde right now. So things are a little slow, you know, uh, getting a little tight, you know, <laughs> and people are a little, you know, bother when it comes to finance a, a little bit. But we working on faith and we work working with people of faith. And so we good. We're going to put it out there. We're just going to do our work to put it all together. Get that get that uh, offering plate going around globally, you know, giving thanks for the global 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 reach that OU Ministries has. We're going to get that offering plate, which is in the form of GoFundMe, <laughs> to pass <laughs> through Atlanta, through Florida, through New York, through uh, well, my people in Japan. I got some people in the UK. I got some people in Trinidad. Uh, oh, ooh, I don't start calling folks out. I got some people in Chi-Town. I got some people in in uh, Michigan. I got some people in uh, 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 a lot. Oh, let me not miss no Arizona. I got some folks. <laughs> I ain't mean to miss nobody, but I'm passing the plate to all of them. Carolinas. Oh, yeah, I got a few, quite a bit of people in Carolina. You know, Alabama, I got a couple of members in Alabama. So passing it through everybody and my people right here on IG, you know, who y'all connect with me via IG in one way or the other. So please do hit that link in bio, give to the GoFundMe. It's going to be amazing. Like this is a rare opportunity for, um, it's already, you know, let's just be honest. It's already rare for melanated people to give, be, ha be given the opportunity to acquire, to own prime real estate. Okay, period. That's just the reality. <laughs> so, you know, it's also a rare opportunity for you to have a relationship. Canada, how did I not shout out Canada? Sorry. Yes, my Canada folks, my Canada folks. I got a handful of two members or people who are affiliated with OU in Canada. But it's a rare opportunity for us to be able to acquire prime real estate and to be able to do it at um, the price that I'm being blessed to do it at and also um, have an owner who's committed to at least giving the time and the space for us to make it happen. Because in this market, you know, especially in Atlanta with gentrification being rampant, you know, if I was dealing with any other owner or any other, you know, 
situation, it will be different, I believe, you know. So I'm grateful. It's been it's in divine order for it to happen. So I know it's in divine order for us to make it happen, for us to put our, uh, our heads together, our prayers together, our funds together, and get this thing done. So head over to that GoFundMe um, and give. Show your love. I give it back to you tenfold. May it come back to you running over, overflowing to you. May it come back to you. Okay, not only tenfold, but overflowing. All right. Peace and love, y'all. It was good hanging out with y'all. I will be going live tomorrow again. Remember, I'm going live during the Mars hour. So just pay attention to my timeline. I'll let you know when the Mars hour end and when I will be going live. Bless. Give thanks. Hey, sister. How you doing? Good to see good to see you on here. It will be good to see you. I haven't seen you in like, I feel like over a year at this point. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like over a year. I'm over I'm over here closing out chatting chatting about my GoFundMe uh, at the link in bio so we can get this land and have a good time for years to come. All right, peace and love y'all.